Hey, it's Mel with the Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online and web ready. So here we are, uh, we're at episode two. In episode one, we talked about the general overview and, and the different software, screencasting software that we were gonna be comparing over this series. And we also said that we didn't want to just basically you know, take all of the basic functionality. So we're making some assumptions on some of the software or all of the software actually that we're comparing that they'll be able to do screen recording Otherwise, what's the point, right? Uh, that they can audio, you know, capture audio, that they'll also be able to do some basic call-outs and, uh, and, you know, and a little bit of animation and so on. Okay, so, uh, so we're kind of assuming that, so let's not do that kind of a comparison. Instead, what we're doing is this comparison here that I'm showing you now, uh, cursor effects, small little tiny things, but uh, my goodness, they have a great influence actually on user uh, on your user experience. So, um, so we'll be taking a look at that and I'll demonstrate shortly why that's kind of important. We'll also take a look at multiple video tracks. Uh, we'll be grading each one on a scale of say one to five, five being the, the better one. And if I can get three or more, at least three video tracks uh, in my screencasting software, I'm doing good and I can say that uh, I'll, I'd be willing to assign that a five. Uh, same thing with audio tracks and then also uh, with annotations and callouts, I want to be able to do uh, some basic stuff. But I want to be able to make sure that we have some pixelation because actually not all software has pixelation and it's important for things like when you're showing how to demonstrate using software that you got to log into. You want to be able to hide that password. So, uh, so we'll take a look at that and then also I'd love to be able to have some, um, I value actually having some of my animations, being able to keyframe them and also to animate them around the three axes, the X, Y and the Z axis. So we'll take a look at that as well. And what we're looking at today is Camtasia Mac and I will already say it's, it's my favorite one. It's the one I use a lot for all of my screencasting um, software, or all my screencasting productions. So I've actually assigned it a five uh, out of all of those criteria and you'll see why. All right, so we're taking a look at Camtasia Macintosh here. Let's go ahead and put a, uh, a video on the timeline and this will kind of be my test video here, let's say. Now keep in mind, this, is not, this series is not a tutorial on how to use the different software. It's basically just a simple comparison around those criteria that I showed you. So here, the very first thing, let's take a look at cursor animation. And oh, by the way, you might get a little confused on which cursor to look at. The one that we want to be looking at here, the one that I'm manipulating right now as I talk to you, is this one with the red circle around it. Okay, that's this guy here. All right, so this one, let's, I'm going to move back and forth in the, the, the scrubber bar here uh, to see if you can notice any animations that are going on. And you'll probably say, you know, maybe you see something, but really what's going on is the cursor's moving around the screen, but you're probably having a hard time seeing that and this is why it's important to be able to have functionality like this where in Camtasia Macintosh I can change the size of that cursor. See what's going on in that box over there? Okay, in the main viewer you can see the cursor now, all right, because I've scaled it up to like four, 500 percent at this point. It increases your viewer experience to be able to see where your cursor is at. Uh, and also some of the other things that helps cursor, cursors as well is some animations around the basic ones that we always know about, right? If you can do some highlighting of the cursor, see that little yellow uh, bubble around it, okay? So that's a basic highlighting effect that most of them should be able to have, but some of the more advanced ones is, you know, this magnification effect, which I find very valuable. And so see how it like magnifies that X? So you can actually keyframe those so it starts up at, um, at different times along your timeline. Okay, so I love that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's for those reasons that I'll give Camtasia a five on the cursor effects in the animation. Now let's take a look at multiple video and multiple audio tracks. Well, I've got some sample video here. Here's a sample video I'm just going to add to the timeline. It's probably something you've seen before in one of my other videos. Uh, but let me just scale it down a little bit here. Uh, and what I want to be able to do is, uh, we'll just go ahead and test the audio just real quick. One of the bonus features I like about software like Camtasia Macintosh is that you can actually separate the audio and, from the video track. So here's a separate video and audio function. Notice what happens here. Now I've got a video, the original video track and the audio track got separated out. Um, so what we can actually do now is I'm just going to do a Command C uh, or Control C on your PC and then Command V to paste that audio track back in. And then let's see how many we can get, right? Okay. Actually, the limit is kind of, I think it's like up to 99 or something like that. So again, we were saying if we can get at least three audio tracks on there, we're doing good and I've got a bunch at this point. So same thing with the video, as it turns out. So I can copy that, Control-C, 
and then we'll do a control V. See how it paste that video right back in there? And then let's just copy that multiple times as well. And here's the deal. So I've actually got multiple videos there. Okay, see how that works? All right, so we'll give it an A there as well. So it's a five out of five for having multiple audio tracks and multiple video tracks. So here's the deal. Let's assume for a moment, I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit here, but let's assume that this A, B, C, D here that you see in all caps, let's assume that's like a password that I don't want to show my viewers as I'm showing how to demonstrate, I'm demonstrating a piece of software. So what, it, what becomes important is the ability to be able to pixelate that or blur that out so that way your viewers, won't, your users won't be able to see that. As it turns out, not all screencasting software has that kind of a basic functionality. So uh, we want to make sure that we have that. So here's an annotations, and it turns out we do have that capability to be able to just really quickly, you know, uh, pixelate out that piece of uh, that piece of text that we're assuming to be a password. So see how that works, okay? So we'll give it a five out of five there. Now the last thing is to be able to, like we said, to be able to animate annotations around the X, Y, and the Z axis. And all that means is if I can rotate it around this way, and then I can rotate it around this way, and then I can spin it around on a vertical axis this way, then we've done pretty good with that, okay? And we'll grade it a five out of five. So let's put something in here. Just take one of my videos again, and we'll glue it in there. So now it's in the timeline. So here's a video. Right? You've probably seen that before. That's a much nicer picture. So, see these, ro these uh, rotation controls over here on the right side? Turns out we have that ability. So I can rotate it around the z-axis. So that's nice. Okay, and we can actually keyframe that. All right. Now, let's see how all that stuff works together. If I can do that, then basically we're going to say it's a 5 out of 5. So there's a z-axis, there's a y-axis, and there's the x-axis. Or was it z, y, and x? Yeah. All right. So we're doing good there, uh, and we'll say that Camtasia Macintosh gets a 5 out of 5 out of the mail rank. All right, that's about it for now. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at Camtasia Studio, which is also by TechSmith, but that's the Windows version of Camtasia. And I think what you'll find is we don't have as much functionality, even though it's produced by the great guys at TechSmith, um, great guys and gals, I should say. Um, I actually find more functionality in the Macintosh version of Camtasia. And indeed, I think it's almost a entirely different software in and of itself. It's more like a video editor for the Mac version than for the Camtasia Windows version. It's still a powerful screencasting software, the Camtasia uh, Windows version, but uh, what we'll see tomorrow, I think, is that it won't really measure up to fives on all of these criteria. Okay, so until the next episode, I'll talk to you again later. This is Mel, Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online and web ready. Take care.